Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to where I do a session on this machine, you do exactly the same session on your machine and we row along together. Now today is going to be the natural progression of a row that we did last time round that was 20 times one minute with one minute off. Now last time we did it at 20 strokes a minute and with max power from our legs. This time we're going to do it at 24 strokes a minute and with max power from your legs. So we're starting to get to that point of really laying in that power from the legs and getting the stroke rate up a little bit higher so you can kind of feel that development towards your 1k if that's what you're training for and this is a great session anyway regardless of whether you're training for a, a 1000 meter time trial or not so hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as i will now before we get anywhere near this we need to take a breath <gasps> There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I just realised I haven't taken a breath in that whole intro. Uh, we need to do a warm up. Now I'm going to do a five minute warm up today, okay? And before we can even do that, we have to set up our machine. Now, on a concept two, that means going to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, I do have a video here on this channel. If you know how to set it, but you don't know where to set it, then I recommend round about 130 and then you can adjust from there. If you know absolutely nothing about this, just set the lever between four and five, okay? Too low isn't the problem too high is the problem, right? If you're in a non-concept two, just set the resistance, you get a nice weight from the stroke, but you don't feel like you have to heave against it. Next up, if you're able to, set your monitor to eye height, so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, set the foot stretcher height, so that as you come forward to the front of the machine, you can get your shins pointing vertically, straight up, okay? If you're set too high in the foot straps, it can be a little bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, it can you can scoot straight past, which can cause power leaks and it can be uncomfortable, it could possibly cause injury, all right? So we're going to do this five minute warm up. You can start off run about 20 strokes a minute and I just want you to think about uh, enough of a push from your feet that you can connect the power from your legs into your hands and then we'll start to increase that power a little bit as we get through the warm up, okay? Right. In fact, I'll increase it by quite a bit towards the end because we need to hit the ground running. So, you'll get what I mean. Just follow me. I'll be fine. <laughs> Here we go then. In three, two, one, go. So like I say, let's just spend this first minute thinking about the connection timing. Pushing with the feet at the same time, <coughs> at the same time the handle connects to the machine. And what I mean is that that's the point where the chain kind of connects to the flywheel on a Concept2 or the blades in the water connect to the water and make it whoosh or the magnet in that machine. Whatever you're using, you basically want to make sure that you feel the force of your machine through the handle at exactly the same time that you push with your feet, okay? And that's how you efficiently get the power in there. Want to make sure you have that forward body tilt and straight arms too, and then that helps it flow into the machine. Okay, so we are a minute into this warm-up. I've just realised that I've set the monitor to only a four minute warm-up. So there'll be a hiccup as I get to zero when I try and <laughs> quickly start a just row for another minute. That's okay. Okay, and now we're approaching a minute and a half. Just take a few strokes to increase power. I really, a three strokes of a much harder push and then let's take five strokes nice and easy still at 20 strokes a minute one more and then let's go for another three laying more power in so you should hear the machine accelerate another five at a slightly gentler pace. And this is a warm up. That's one here. We'll do another three, nice and powerful. So get that power pushed into the machine. Five slow. I've never really done this as a row along warm up before. These little micro bursts. I've lost count. 
Let's hit one more here. Do three fast. Or three hard. There we go. Down slow again. This should make you work a little bit harder, but not really tire you out. One more. Three hard. Push. Get that power. One more. You might start to feel a tiny bit of a burn from your legs. That's a good thing. One more. One. Two. And make sure to push in that power. If I time this right. Oh no, I've still got in a minute, haven't I? <laughs> okay. Three more. One. Two. Okay, so three. This is where I need to you keep going. I'm quickly gonna reset my monitor. Just wrote. Right, and what we're going to do is just paddle home at 20 strokes a minute. And at that kind of, not a gentle pace, but if you have a 2k training pace, run about 2k plus 18. Just to keep moving and making sure you're putting in some kind of effort here. Now, once we said, the first interval of the main session will, once you've got that done, you will be warm. But this part of the warm-up is just about protecting you against injury before we start that first interval. Okay, this should be five minutes done. Apologies if I'm a second or so out due to being What's the, what's the word? If I to say irresponsible, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, set the monitor wrong. Anyway, so keep moving up and down the rail. Uh, have a quick drink, do some light rowing if you wish, as I quickly just explain one more time what we're doing today. Okay then, so just to recap, what we're doing today is 21 minute intervals with one minute rest in between. And you're gonna do these at 24 strokes per minute, and you're gonna do it max power from your legs. Now remember the point of this is not to just fly and die and be destroyed after one interval, you still need to be able to make sure and last all 20, but that's what the one minute recovery is about, is that should then let you recover to be able to go max again. So you should, should be able to get full power in for all 20 intervals, okay? A fade may happen at the end, possibly between intervals kind of 15 to 18. That's kind of the kind of the dark hole, the black hole of this kind of a session where you suddenly go, oh, it's going on for so long. And then you get a last minute of wind for those last couple of intervals to finish. Who knows? Let me know in the comments, obviously, of the video how you got on with this one, okay? So have a quick drink. Make sure you've got a drink nearby. And we'll get into this. Now remember, you can either follow me for stroke rate, by watching me on the video or listening to me in the podcast, or just count down every two and a half seconds on your monitor, and that's gonna work out as 24 strokes a minute. Sunglasses on, because that sun keeps on coming in and out. Here we go then. 24 strokes a minute, max power from your legs, in three, two, one, go. So really, that connection thing that I was talking about, in the warm-up, this is where it comes into play. Where well, you want to make sure that every millimeter of leg power is going in to every stroke. It's more important to connect at the front of the machine and drive in the legs than it is to try and make up for it at the back of the stroke. Three, two, 
Last one. One. So, that first interval should have sprinkled some spice into how you're feeling and you're like, oh, okay. But it shouldn't have left you destroyed. That's the thing about a rate cap. It's only so hard at 24 strokes a minute at max power you can go from a cardio point of view. So, and then when you get these one minute rests in between, that one to one ratio should let you recover each time to be able to do it again. You'll get a cardiac drift and it'll get tougher and tougher, but it's not like I'm telling you to go absolute max 1K rate and pace. I'm just saying as hard as you can. My average just, this, just then was bang on 2K pace. In case you're interested, let's see if it's any better. So six, five, four, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> And those small tweaks that you can do to your technique can be very rewarding when rowing. Because you see it on the monitor right in front of you. So just by trying to tighten up my connection at the front, I dropped from 147 average to 145. Eight strokes to go. Four more. So yeah, so that's 2K plus one. But then I'm not too sure whether I could manage a seven minute 2K right now. Maybe possibly because we've been doing speed trading for the past week and a half. I'll get closer to it, but I'd almost say that that one was 146 average. And that's probably closer to what my 2K time is right now. So let's say 2K pace is what you're aiming for at 24 strokes a minute here. Now, 15 seconds to go. If you want to do some light rowing before the interval to protect your back from that stopped flywheel, please do. Six seconds to go. Two, one, go. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot the three there. Maybe I'll add it in and post. Oh, not quite got the connection right. In the first few strokes there. Make sure, think about those arms and keeping them straight as you push your feet into the machine. Use your arms at the back of the stroke, not the front. Six strokes to go. Keep that power up. Two more. Remember to drink in these intervals. You may not feel like you need to because there's only one minute worth of effort, but the dehydration will catch up on you. Ooh. Only three down. And the breathing rate for me is right up. Heart rate is finishing. That one was 77% of max. Hmm. Should possibly be higher. But start that light rowing if you want to go on a moving flywheel. Oh. Here we go, six, five, 
four, three, two, one, go. So really think about straight arms and then push the machine away from you. If you can think more about pushing the machine away than thinking about pulling on the handle or pushing yourself backwards, you'll find it's a lot easier to get that connection spot on. Did I miss a stroke? I feel like I've just slowed right down. Three, two, one. Now, in your hunt for that power, it may be that what just happened to me will happen to you where you'll start that lean back way too soon. I lost concentration because I was too busy worrying about my stroke rate. And so as I came in to drive with the legs, my back led the way just then. So let's concentrate in the next interval on not doing that. <laughs> okay, 15 seconds to go. Start that light rowing if you want. I'm like, it's a bit repetitive, but it's important to remind you. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So tilt forwards over your hips so that you are leaning in towards the front of the machine at a, well, 11 o'clock angle as you're looking at me today because I'm the other way around but certainly the important thing is that you're pitched forwards by tilting over your hips and then as you connect your feet and push the machine away hold that forward tilt two more one more Ooh. I think I was half a second out there I'll try and concentrate better on my stroke rate next. Should be easy, just counting down one every two and a half seconds, but and there's a lot to concentrate on. It's easy to just go blind to that. 25. And we're a quarter of the way there. Okay, and that's 15 seconds. Make sure you're strapped in if you're going for a standing start like me. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Push. Remember, the whole point here is about transferring that power from your legs into the handle and that's why you have that forward tilt and arms straight so that as you push with your feet you are hanging off the handle that power it's just surging into the machine without 
your back uh, or arms uh, fighting against it. Because if you pull too early from the front, it's like your arms act like a sponge soaking up that power from your legs. So although a little bit of the power from your legs will go in, gets lost in through your arms. And at the same time, your arms lose power because you're starting there. So get the power in through straight arms and then finish with the pull. 15 seconds. 10. It's quite warm today. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Push. And do notice that I said, talk about pushing. Okay? I'm not saying pull on the handle to go faster. The cue is push with your feet. Slide forwards so your shins are pointing vertically and then push your feet into the plates. Push the machine away from you. Four to go. One more. So, whether it's technique or just generally warming up, that one just then, the average was 145.3, so just under a second faster than when I started, even though that was interval seven. So that shows how concentrating on parts of your technique can just tighten you up in a good way and squeeze that power out. Okay. Oh, I didn't have a drink. I need to have a drink in the next one. 15 seconds. It's a bad habit, not drinking in these intervals. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Push. <clears throat> and get those ankles, or those heels, sorry. Firmly planted into those foot plates as you push the power in. It's like deadlifts and squats. You wouldn't do them off your toes. So why would you do this off your toes? Much more power to plant your feet. Four more. Two more. Last one. I mean, you will find some rowers who go right up onto their toes, push off from their toes, and can still roll fast. Have a drink. But for most mere mortals, it's much more efficient to plant those heels down. If you come forwards and your heels come up a little bit, that's okay. As long as you get those heels down as you drive back. 15 seconds to go. Start that light rowing. Only if you need to, you don't have to. 
five, four, three, two, one, go. As much as there's a slight danger of injury, if your back is unprepared to keep on starting each interval from a stopped flywheel, what it does give you is consistency always starting from stopped means you have a true comparison across your intervals and if you come back to this session again oh, a few more done or if you always do it from a moving flywheel although the difference isn't that major there still is an amount that you don't know how much you manage to get the flywheel up spinning before the start of each interval so it's not quite the same have a drink And although there can still be slight starting differences into each interval from that stopped point, it's kind of down to you to learn how to go when it hits zero. 15 seconds to go. To try and even that stuff up. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Remember, although 24 is still not considered a high rate, it's not particularly slow either. So you may not be too used to rowing at this rate. And so it's half about that push giving you a faster drive speed but also about the recovery finish the stroke let the handle release then arms out body rocks forwards <coughs> There we go. It's Bon Jovi time. We're halfway there. If a joke's worth doing once, it's worth doing over and over. <laughs> oh. Have a drink. Oh. Those little flying seeds little white fairies, whatever you want to call them, flying around. I'm worried I'm going to inhale one. <laughs> okay. And 15. Oh. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go. <clears throat> And so your recovery is just as fluid as your drive. Where your drive goes legs, back, arms, in a nice sequence, your recovery should go arms, back, legs. So you don't bend your knees until your hands are past them and your back has rocked forwards and then you just bend 
your knees to slide. So, slide itself on the recovery is quite quick, but you finish, arms away, body rock, then slide. And that's important because it, timing wise, teaches you to be in this position, in the perfect position for the next stroke as you bend your knees. Whereas you, if you go, as you come forwards, you have to somehow work out how to get from here to here. And that's tricky. You don't need to, 15 seconds to go. 10 seconds. Uh, six, five, four, three, two, one. Push. And then, whatever rate you're rowing at, if you can just think about how fluid you need to be on that recovery, it will really help you. Kind of adds a next level of preparation for your next stroke. Because you're not having to think about how much to lean or what to do with your arms. Because you're already there. Five, four, three, two, one. Hmm. I was getting quite a strange calf twang in that one. So I'll have to make sure I'm not coming too far forwards or opening my knees out. So don't be surprised if that's why I speak about in interval 13. So I'm still, that last one was 145.3, so I'm still holding ground for pace. Hopefully you are too. 15 seconds to go. Get yourself ready in six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Because you don't want to get into the trap of thinking sliding further forwards will help. You just want shins vertical. And that's the optimum position to be able to surge that power from your legs into the machine. And then try and keep your knees kind of just inside your armpits. Four, three, two, one. Ooh, that very last stroke I think I got wrong. I do have something weird going on with my calves. Don't know what it is. It's especially worse if I go out for a run. It starts off feeling like cramp. And then it feels like there's a golf ball back there. Have a drink. It's likely a pull or a strain or something, but that's because I'm doing this high rocks training. I could kind of do without pain when I run. 15 seconds to go. Oh, 10, 
Number 14 coming up. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So keep those knees inside the kind of cage that you make with your arms as you come forwards. Some folks, especially those who maybe have a bit of extra padding in their stomach, may find <coughs> opening their knees very slightly so they're underneath the armpits will give them more room as they slide forwards but if you can keep your knees just inside that's better one more oh. that's 14 done I remember being four in and thinking oh well that took a while but now we're at 14 it's only six more to go have a drink you don't have to take much just a, a gulp is enough often it's just enough for your body to go oh it's okay I am getting fluids I don't have to shut down 15 seconds to go oh. 10 seconds 6 5 4 3 2 1 push and do although everything I'm talking about is more focused on the front of the stroke pushing that power in make sure to keep that power going all the way to the back of the stroke use your whole leg drive point your toes to the front of the machine at the back of the stroke make sure power is connected into the handle from front to back two more one more yeah I was definitely over leaning but it did, did give me my first sub 145 admittedly 144.9 average I'll take it so that's us three quarters of the way there didn't seem that long ago I made the Bon Jovi joke does it oh. so time flies well time flies during the rest period <laughs> slows right down during the work part 15 seconds to go Whew. Uh, 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 go uh, just because I haven't really spoken about getting power from your arms doesn't mean you don't you start off by taking up the force and bracing against the handle with fingers hooked over the handle but then once you start that backswing halfway through the stroke that's when those arms get a chance to shine 
four, three, two, one. Yay. Four, four point nine again. So you stay straight, swing, then pull. The important thing is pull and try to keep your wrists as flat as possible. A slight upwards, not too much of an issue. It'd be better if they were flat. What you don't want is to finish up here with palms facing the machine or down here with palms facing backwards, both of which ruin your available power. Five. Or five, fifteen. <laughs> Done it again. Scared you. Ten. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Push. <clears throat> so what you're trying to do is to, at the finish of the stroke, pull in the handle as powerfully as you can on the rowing machine anyway and then get those elbows through your sides and that uses your back muscles your lats your so rhomboids whereas if you finish high you use your much smaller delts and your forearms oh that was a bit slower so finish elbows through your sides a slight outwards of elbows is fine. What I don't want is this, okay, where hands are pointing in, elbows in line with shoulders and ears, because then everything's up here and in here, rather than your lats, which are a lot bigger than your delts and your forearms. Godzilla. <laughs> 15 seconds. But three more to go. That's why I've gone mad. <clears throat> 10. 7. 3. 2. 1. Push. <clears throat> and so the handle basically just comes in a straight line forwards. <clears throat> and backwards we're on a rowing machine so unless you have good reason there is no need to tap down straight forwards straight backwards you can hear the click as the handle hits off my poor heart rate monitor at sternum height. Four more. One more. Ooh. 44.6. Getting faster. So, historically for me anyway, the next one is the toughest because you're like still got one more to go after this uh, but don't ease off that's the point of these one minute breaks is you might start the break a little bit ragged but by the time you get to the minute gone you're okay for the next interval. 15 seconds to go. 
to be able to give it your all again. 10, nine, six, three, two, one, push. <clears throat> so penultimate interval. We've done 18 so far. <clears throat> Hopefully <clears throat> at a consistent or maybe faster at times pace keep it going for two more push those feet into the machine with arms straight and a forward tilt hold that tilt and straight arms until halfway through the leg drive. <clears throat> Two more. One more. <clears throat> oh. ah. Point six. How is it? 144.5 from most of that. But I think I eased off the last stroke and lost 0.1 <sighs> Mathematically, part of me thinks if I can do these one minutes at around 145 surely I can do this for seven minutes in a row if I can do 20 with breaks 15 seconds Last time for light rowing to protect your back. 10 seconds until our last interval. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go. Give it all you've got. Let's see what you could have been capable of at 24. If only your brain I hadn't told you to pace it. If you were really giving your max, what would you have achieved? I've got 140 so far. Eight. Come on. 38. 4 3 oh. Pretty faces all around there But I managed for a couple of strokes to get down to 138 which is what seven seconds faster than my average for the row what was my average that was my final hang on where are we 145.1 was my average for today's session and I managed those last few strokes at 24 strokes a minute at 138 so that says the power that is available in my legs but in order to get through all 20 my brain kicked in and was like you can't go that hard but I know that's what I'm capable of so it's almost like I should come back and do this session again and make sure I'm doing it at least 142 pace because that's still four seconds slower that's right in between but we'll see right three minute cool down we we'll do the first minute just some light rowing and then we'll do the single leg arms only legs only whatever stuff okay here we go in three two one just do this like your warm-up it's so a night li nice light row pick a pace where you feel you are 
able to smooth your cooling down from just stopping the main session a minute and a half ago to just help your body ease into a finish so don't go so hard that you suddenly feel that you're working again but make sure to push with your feet to connect with your hands to rub your belly <sighs> I, need to, I need to lighten up in sessions like this I'm so busy just trying to get across the importance of technique tweaks to make you go faster that I sometimes forget about the entertaining part of this right take one foot out oops put it on the ground continue rowing with that leg that's still strapped in this will just help that leg that's strapped in just with the motion that compression to the front and that single push will just help it ease off one more stroke and then let's swap feet and continue it's much harder doing this now that I'm wearing shoes again due to my high rocks training but basically because there's running involved in high rocks when I compete I'll have to wear shoes so that, in case you're wondering is why I've started rowing in shoes again because I'll have to wear them on the competition floor so there's no point always training in socks I need to train what I'm going to face ok, both feet in legs straight roll with your back and arms you don't have to strap your feet in yet you can do that on the next bit but just swing over your back pull in your arms out with your arms swing forwards over your back again you should find if you get this right you don't need to use your feet to tug against the straps it's the whole point of the hands away in the rock ok, so let's roll to the front tighten your straps on the way arms straight, forward tilt and just press out with your legs not particularly hard I just want you to work on that feeling of keeping your arms straight straight as you push from the front and holding that forward tilt and then thinking about that connection between the push of your feet and the handle and also thinking about heels down as you push like I say if you come forwards and your heels are up do my ball out of the way and your heels are up, I say that much about an inch off the foot plate as long as as you push you kind of do that ok, you don't do that see the difference? heel up if I was to do that I've lost all of that leg drive ok, all of that is gone in the process of getting my heel down to push whereas if I go heel and push very subtle but it's like heel and push so you're in that position heel and push ok so it's simpler to keep your heels down and I think this is where one of my equine based competitors got into a bit of a kind of self-fulfilling issue with a video that he made saying don't lift your heels off the footplate he was kind of saying as you it's like for beginners it's best to not lift the heels off the footplate but it's also saying when you drive you want to make sure those heels are down but unfortunately that's been taken through the entire <laughs> indoor rowing community is do not lift your heels off the footplate and Shane is still and he has since released a video saying no no that's not what I meant I meant for beginners and for, for stuff but unfortunately the door is open, the horse is bolted the dark horse is bolted there we go, here's a don't, don't, just because I said his name and stuff don't go looking for him please stay with me <laughs> anyway, right, let's get into some stretching uh, if, you, uh, if, if you're not going to stretch I assume you've probably signed off already anyway otherwise make sure and do your quads and your hamstrings uh, before you get into the shower because I don't want to slip and fall over uh, next up you can join Stretchy John he will take you through some very guided proper structured stretching these are the ones that I do but I will also take you through on machine stretching if, you have, if you're just in the gym you can't get to a stretching mat or anything so put your feet back in Okay, straps are nice and loose hands in the air fold forward so you're folding your chest down towards your legs and then oh, I've got my seat wrong my bum's pushing that way so and then there we go that's better 
and then that will stretch your hamstrings. Now, depending on what you do with your toes, your ankles, your knees, your hips, how you're perching on the seats, what you're doing with how much of a fold you've got down, what you do with your hands coming forwards, they can all adjust how effective uh, a hamstring stretch you get while doing this. So it can be, you can be completely wasting your time if you get this wrong, which is why it's best to sit on the ground and do it because of this knee bend that can come in and suddenly you're like, oh, this isn't touching me at all. Um, whereas if you lock your knees down, that can be, you can cause issues by doing that. So you need to find somewhere in between that works for you, okay? Next up, glutes, one leg up on the rail, bring the other foot across into the crook of your knee, hold this knee back that way, hold onto the back of the machine and rotate in, and you should find that your glute gets a nice little stretch from doing this. Um, that back arm is to support you and for you to rotate into, can support you because without that you could, especially because you're on a uh, seat that's moving backwards and forwards you could fall off and nobody wants that, especially in a busy gym. You could hold onto the seat, I suppose, but I find holding onto the back just helps plant in this rotation to, to make sure I can get that stretch into my glutes. I know the fact I've started doing all these stretches towards the end now has robbed us all of seven minutes of one of my usual rants, but to be fair, I do tend to put them on at the end anyway. <laughs> right, quads next. So, oops, flick your foot up, oh god look at this, look, look like I wet myself, foot up to your backside, hold it against your backside and then depending on the angle of your body, how much you're pulling, that all affects how much of a stretch you get into your quads, but it looks like I've wet myself, I promise you I haven't, oh, it's just a it's proof of how much effort I put into that. I had a reply to week one session five, the three times two minutes from somebody saying that they didn't feel that it was enough for them. And it's kind of made me think, is that down to someone just not trying hard enough or did I under-program it? If ever you feel like it's not been enough for you, just rewind the video and do another couple of intervals. Just because the video is only that long doesn't mean you have to stop. Uh, right, now I'm gonna do, tell what I'll do. I'll do one glute stretch the way Chris uh, showed me, or told me to do. So go into a lunge with your knee past your toes and then bring the other foot or the other knee down. And as you come down, push your hip forwards, okay? Now this means that you're putting quite a lot of load into this left, or in my case, left quad. And you have to concentrate on making sure to get that push forwards uh, on the hips on the other leg. Um, but what it means is that you don't have to put a knee on the ground. Now, I still prefer having that knee on the ground and then doing this get a much better stretch instantly from just that motion there as I bring the knee over my foot push that hip forwards I can really feel it right up in the hip flexor in a way that doing it off the ground I wasn't able to get but that's probably because I'm not very good at it <laughs> so uh, if you're someone like Grace who asked for a version of this where you don't put your knee on the ground, try the other one, but then just experiment with how you're moving your body to make sure you get the right kind of stretch out of it, okay? Ooh. Right, uh, shoulders, so arm out in front of you. I feel like I'm like flag signaling when I do that. Then bring your arm across and then just kind of, you'll get it, get it right between how much you pull back how much you stretch your torso into it and things, you'll eventually get that stretch right. But remember, even on a session like today that was max power, your shoulders shouldn't really be absolutely, there's a Scottish word, louping, louping. My shoulders are louping, man. Um, they shouldn't be louping, <laughs> which means very sore. I that kind of a workout. Okay, so if they are, chances are you're just shrugging with your shoulders when you're taking your stroke. So try and keep your shoulders down and the, Good, I'd say this tip in one of the previous ones, but the good thing to do there is as you come forward, just think about rotating your elbows down, because as you rotate your elbows, hopefully you can see my shoulders kind of roll down as well. And so what that does is it kind of brings your shoulders down, engages the lats, so that as you take the stroke, it's all going through your lats instead of up here. Okay, uh, what's next? Triceps, which is the ones that I missed the other day. So here we go. So put your hands, so it's touching down your neck and your spine. Use your other hand to kind of pull that arm backwards to kind of stretch it a little bit further down your back. Obviously, if you can lift, if you can reach up and round and grab. Oh, I'm getting so close. It's helping doing this. I can feel 
that this the stretching I've started to do at the end of all of these, like right after the row, instead of waiting until after I've recorded the video, the stretching is helping my flexibility a little bit. Although I did just purchase a, one of these flexibility courses that you find. So I'm gonna start doing that and I will report back and let me pilfer their ideas and make, <laughs> make a video out of it. I'll change it, don't worry. Um, right, and then last up is biceps. I was about to turn around and do it the other way just then, but I'd fall off if I did that. So you go, hands behind, rotate out with your thumbs. Okay, so you're ski jumping, you're rotating out your thumbs, and that's going to stretch your biceps. Ooh, nice stretch. Okay, so that's it. This is done with the stretching. You can, of course, continue to stretch if you wish, if you've got muscle groups that you feel that you should. In fact, I'll probably stand on a step and stretch my calves after the little niggle I was getting um, during that row. So make sure and stretch what you need to uh, have something to eat and drink and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then let me know how you got on. Did you, how fast did you go? I don't know whether, have I still got, let me, sorry, man plays with phone. Oh no, my phone's died. Oh, that's not handy, is it? Ah, oh, whatever. I was going to say, could I compare it to the 20 strokes a minute? I can't remember what my average was for that. I think it was like 151. It's my average for um, the 20 strokes a minute version of this. Whereas what it says, 145. So that's quite good. So hopefully that's a combination of it being four strokes faster, but also um, just adding more power and fitness in from having done uh, a week and a half of this plan so far. So that was week two, session three of the 1K plan, if that's what you're doing. So the next session, session four, is going to be back to a low intensity recovery row to then set us up for session five which on this plan is mostly these kind of short fast bursts okay so it's not about um prolonged intensity like today was it's about like a, a finishing short fast burst for that kind of end of the week to then give you a chance to then recover and start all over again okay so it's it's, an, it's if you look at how it's programmed through the point through the series of the whole plan you'll see that session five is its own little little sorry little uh, strange little kind of thing where it's like you just go blah, and you're done rather than today it was like blah, blah, and then you're done that was my zombie, wasn't it? That's the noise that my little zombie carrot would make. Who I've not spoken about for a while. So the next time I'm rowing inside and not outside in the vest, I'm gonna to have to make sure I'm wearing my zombie carrot t-shirt and explain why I have a zombie carrot for all the new people who are like, what, carrot, zombie, what's he on about? Okay, so that's what I'll do, promises, hey? <laughs> so I will see you in a future row. Hopefully it will be week two, session four of the 1K plan. If not, it could be one of the currently, I think I counted today and I have 517 videos up here on YouTube. Let's figure 117 of them are me talking about apps and technique and all that kind of stuff, but, which means that there's at least 400 different workouts that you, you could, you could pick one of my workout videos every day for a year and still have some left over uh, to roll January 4 and you won't have repeated the same uh, video. You might have re repeated the same workout because I do like 30 minutes and 20 strokes a minute quite a lot, but, but just, it, it, it's all for free. Aren't I mean, No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That's, uh, yeah, so you can pick one of them if you wish, uh, or you can see me in another one or whatever. But yeah, make sure and leave me a comment on whatever video you do next, but also make sure and leave me a comment on this one. Let me know how you got on with it, all right? Until I see you in another video, please look after yourselves. Take care, be well, bye-bye. <laughs>